Today in this video, I'm gonna give you 15 tricks and tips about hot mud that even your drywaller may not know. We're gonna do that right after this. Number one on the list is hot mud should never be put on in thin coats. By thin, I mean really tight. Like if you were spotting nails and you put it on and wipe it off, that's a thin coat. Another way would be skim coating. If you're doing a tight skim coat, it's a bad idea. And I'll tell you why. The reason is, and this is per the manufacturer, when you put the hot mud on, let's say it's 20 minute hot mud, it actually needs 20 minutes to cure. It actually chemically cures. It's an exothermic chemical reaction that causes it to harden. And if you don't give it 20 minutes to cure it doesn't form its bonding strength therefore it doesn't stick as good so basically here's the rule if it air dries before the time on the bag if it air dries in 10 minutes and it's 20 minute it didn't properly cure it won't have um, the bonding strength especially all right tip number two is hot mud is not good for everything some of you use it for everything if you can get by with that sometime it works but here's some examples of where you don't want to use hot mud it's really best not to use it in tools like banjos and bazookas tip number three hot mud is very unpredictable and by that i mean the way hot mud sets up throughout the day can change dramatically i've had days where i've had to use hot mud all day long for eight hours like on a motel one time every time you rinse off your tools you mix up another batch through the day it starts setting up weirder and weirder and by that i mean it would do things like suddenly i'd get a lump in there where the mud was totally smooth but all of a sudden i got a big lump because it's hardening up in that section or i've had it where it started hardening hardening up on one side of my pan and it's still fine on the other. It's best when everything is super clean. Clean water, clean tools, and even when you think you're cleaning your tools really good, it can still affect that next batch. So the longer you use it, the more batches you use, the more unpredictable it gets. I'm going to show you how it'll probably set up way longer than the time on the bag. Tip number four, the number on the bag it says Easy Sand 20. That doesn't mean it's going to set up in 20 minutes necessarily. That's more about your working time because once it starts setting up, you can't really work with it anymore and you should not. That's another tip I'm gonna give you. You basically have 20 minutes to work with it, but it might take 25, 30, 35 minutes before it sets up enough to put the next coat on. And that leads us into this. We're going to test this right now. Tip number five is hot mud sets up much slower over non-pore surfaces. All right, we're using our level five tools today. I think I'll just use like a 10. If you guys need any level five tools, I recommend them. These are high quality tools and I can get you 10% off. Go down to the description down below and there should be a link. If there's not, go to that kilted guy. Com. So if we were coating this as a repair, we just want to put a couple quick coats on here. And then we could just go around the outside edge, feather it, call it good. Now this isn't a real repair, so I'm not going to put too much time into it, but that's not bad. If you're doing a repair, you, you want to coat it just thick enough to where the mesh tape disappears. And if you use mesh tape, always use hot mud can't use regular joint compound over it or it's more likely to crack okay we let this sample set up quite a bit longer than I planned on it's probably been an hour and I'll show you it's still a little bit soft here's the square that was raw you can see it's solid but let's go over here and we wipe down through here and you can see it's still damp and not set up so there's my point if you're going to go over a painted surface hot mud doesn't always work that great it may have to air dry and if not it's going to take a lot longer another tip you don't have to mix this stuff up to be silky smooth if you over mix it you also can make it set up weirdly and all that it's just not a good idea to over mix it i've done most all these mistakes i know that it can mess up your mud so all right let's see how it works here you want to start out nice and slow so you're not slinging it all over the place 
Okay, it's off a little bit, but it's close. Now, the reason I'm trying to show you this is because the last thing you wanna do is go back and forth and it's really easy. It's really touchy. You'll see, I won't add much powder here. You don't wanna go too thin, too thick, too thin, too thick, because you keep re-tempering it more or less and it can make it set up really weirdly too quickly and you're eating up some of that time. You don't want to keep going back and forth a lot. It makes your mud a mess. I usually just sprinkle enough on there to look like it will absorb that excess. That wasn't very much at all. It's just a tiny bit thin. Now, a lot of times hot mud will start thickening up as you use it so i generally want it to be a little bit thinner to start so that if it thickens up it's still usable because skipping ahead to tip number 10 you don't want to retemper the mud after you've been using it for a little while trying to add more water to thin it down because it got too thick if you do that it can really affect it now it says that on the bag i'm not making up some of these are from experience some are from the manufacturer you don't want to retemper. So try and get it right the first time. That's why it's better to start out a little too thin. If you start out a little too thick, you can't thin it down. Be sure and always clean your tools up as you go because tip number seven is this stuff will set up underwater. So I'm actually going to put a little bit back on here. Actually, I don't want to do that. I don't want to scrape it off. I'm going to put it on a stick. And we're going to drop it into the water and we're going to pull it out after it's set up here and we'll see if it's still wet or not. I've done that before and paid the price and had to scrape it off. So I'm confident it's gonna set up underwater. Now my mud knife magically turned into a paint stick. We're just gonna put a gob on here and stick it underwater. Tip number eight is if you want this stuff to set up faster, use hot water. We're gonna try that here in a minute. If it sets up in 20 minutes, uh, I did a little batch with regular mud, just cold water. And then we did a little batch with the hot water. We'll see if it actually accelerates it because it usually does. But beware if you do that, you don't know how fast it's gonna accelerate it. So it might bite you in the butt. So be careful, but it will speed it up most of the time. I've got some really hot water here. I can touch it with my finger so it's not boiling but it's really hot we're gonna mix it up extra hot just a little bit we don't need much here i really like these solid stainless steel knives that level five has they clean up easier they look nice a little tiny bit more okay there we have it we're gonna start the timer here in just a second right there okay we'll start the timer right now and because i don't want to i'm not going to make you guys wait the whole time i'm going to put it on the screen right here how it came out how long okay we let that run and let it set up and it turns out it really didn't affect it that much at all i've never done this experiment i've just heard that hot water would help so we tried it and it didn't change it very much let me know if you guys have different results tip number nine you saw on the bag right here in the video it says usg easy sand it's not easy sand now what they mean by that is compared to durabon which is what we used to use for these things it does sand easier. I'm gonna test that out right here. We have some USG plus three and some hot mud, which is the easy sand. We're just gonna sand on it a little bit and kind of gauge how much dust comes off of it. Okay, I, I tried to put these on the same thickness. I'm pretty much all the way through that right there. Let's try this one. Okay, in about the same amount of time, it's still got a long ways to go. It did sand a little bit, but it's still got a pretty sharp edge here and it's still pretty thick. So let's sand a little more. Okay, that's enough. We we're stirring up a lot of dust in here anyway. <coughs> Not too much. I probably should have had a mask on anyway, but you can see the point is it is not easy sand. Okay, for tip number 11, often we use one bucket, we wash our tools in it, get more water out, mix some hot mud. And if you do that much, that water gets dirty and contaminated. And I have found without a doubt, it can affect your batch of hot mud. There's something about the leftover remnants in there can make it set up quicker and strangely. All right, this hot mud here has been setting up for a while. This one don't I just threw it there because it was some more dirty mud. So this is the clean water mix. This is the dirty water mix. And they've set up for a while now. So let's see. There's not much difference. It, Sometimes it doesn't make a lot of difference. Other times more. But just feeling this. That one is mostly set up. But still got a little softness to it. This one is a bit firmer. If you can hear that. They're both set up so that it should tap a little bit here too. 
but you can hear it's softer sounding. The big disadvantage to dirty water is it can cause it to set up weirdly. So in lumps, unexpectedly, sometimes it sets up in your pan. So I quit doing that many years ago. Now, in case you guys are wondering what I'm looking at, we've got a board, a big white board over here that was provided to us by Vivor. Vivor has been giving me a lot of tools to try out, things like this big whiteboard, and I love this thing. It really helps when I'm trying to remember all these points. So I can look over at it. Uh, Vivor's slogan is, I believe it's tough tools, half the price, and I think it really fits. We've been using some of their stuff for six months. I'm really happy with it. So check out Vivor if you need any tools, electronics, all kinds of things. We even have some drywall stilts to demonstrate and test to you pretty soon. So tip number, 12 is dirty tools can affect your setting time so to avoid that what you want to do is clean your tools really thoroughly between each batch don't just get it close and think you know there's not much left it's not going to hurt anything that leftover material in there can affect the next batch Okay, I'm gonna skip uh, number 15 and then I'm gonna show you tip number 14 and a couple bonus tips. Tip number 15 is Durabond is not necessarily better than lightweight easy sand. There's some guys out there that swear by it and it's a great product, but it's kind of the old school product and there's nothing wrong with it. It still is a great product, but it's harder to sand than the easy sand. So don't be misled and think that only Durabond is good for pre-filling and deep fills and things like that. I did some all purpose here, just getting it out of my template, it fell apart. Um, this is Durabond and it's way tougher once this cures at this thickness. It's also, this is regular easy sand. It's also really tough. Durabond is a little bit harder. So if you need that absolute hardness, go with Durabond. Now we're also testing why we call it hot mud. You can see in this little video clip here, right there I'm pointing at the hot mud. You can see it's, I think it was 78 degrees, 79. And on the drywall where I pointed it at, it was much cooler. So it's not like it gets real hot, but you can see there's a little bit of an exothermic reaction going on there. Okay, my two bonus tips were one, always use hot mud and mesh together, not mesh and all purpose. But my second one, if you're doing a job, if you guys are tradesmen, you're going in the house, coating some stuff, and then you got to go outside and wait until it sets up before you can put the next coat on. Instead of walking in the house, touching it, oh, still too wet, go outside and wondering when it's set up. Throw it on a chunk of cardboard, masking paper, whatever. Then all you got to do is reach over and touch it. If it's still wet here, it's still wet in the house. They set up basically the same unless it's over paint. Now we are also testing, will it set up underwater? Well, this stick has been underwater the whole time. Just now pulling it out and you can see if I don't drop that and hurt myself, it's set up just it's very firm. It's soft, but you're not going to wash that off with just a brush. It does set up slightly softer underwater, but you don't want to trust that at all. Oh yeah, I forgot. One more tip for you. Another bonus tip. When you're washing up your tools, if you do this in your sink, be careful. I clogged up a P-trap that way one time and I thought I was breaking it up into really fine little particles so it would just flow on through. It didn't. The reason is it's heavier than the water. It settles a little bit at a time and it will harden underwater like you saw it clogged up their P-trap. So here's the trick. You can do it. Just run lots of water as you're washing it. Wash it slowly. Don't have really dense cloud of water going down through there and then run copious amounts of water through it to make sure it flushes all that sediment out. Ever since I started doing that, it works fine. Hey, I hope this was entertaining to you and you learned a few things. Let me know how many of these tricks you didn't know or did know. And guess what? I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.